No catches last night. There's plenty of activity on the trail cam, so I know that I, I've still got a problem here. I think it's time to up my game a little bit. We're doubled up on good natures. We've got the live trap set and the game camera right there. That is hopefully gonna catch whatever happens. Good morning. You guys have done quite a number on this garden. Boy. The pigs have completely demolished this garden. In fact, uh, there's, there's really nothing left for them to do out here. But I'm still giving them access to it because they seem to prefer to be out here. For some reason, they like this end of the pen where they've got this gigantic hole dug. So I'm just letting them stay out here. Really, what I've had trouble with with this pen is not them getting out, but what happens is they start rooting up right next to that wire and they'll push that mud up to where it touches the wire and the mud is wet enough to allow the wire to ground out. So every morning and evening, I'll come out here with a shovel and if I have to kick any big clods off of that wire, then that's what I do. Pigs getting out is never fun, so we're trying to avoid that. Next job, we gotta run a bale up to the steer pasture and then we'll see where the day goes from there. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Now I know a lot of people are probably thinking, I don't need to lock those steers out of there because they're not gonna get too far from wherever the bale is. And you're probably right, but you know, you're probably right. You might not be. Well, there's another bale in the feeder. A lot of people have been asking why do I don't feed these bales on the ground out here. And I've thought about it because you look at the topography of this land, this would be a great place to do the gravity round bale feeder. But the reason that I don't do it is because if I roll the hay out on the ground, there's only seven steers here. They would end up wasting a lot of that. And I know people say that well, it's not a bad thing. It's not a waste for them to stomp it into the ground. And I get what you're saying, 
but in this scenario or in this application, I want this hay to last. I want it to last some three or four days. And if I roll it out on the ground, it'll probably only last some one or two. Just for kind of the way we're set up over here, I need the hay to last. So that's why I put it in a feeder. Oh, you guys are being so patient. Thank you. Let me get the tractor out and then you can go in. problem is they associate the bale with the tractor so they they haven't figured out quite yet that if they want that bale they got to run down to the feeder guys go on go get it i thought you guys would run down there i did you wanted to say hi huh Feisty with me. Well, they'll figure it out. Ah. Next job today is I got to put the pallet forks on the big new Holland and run it back over to my house because I'm expecting a shipment today and I don't know exactly what time they're going to show up, but I got to be ready. So as you can see, the shipment that I was waiting on today was in fact my pallet of Redmond salt blocks. I've been using Redmond salt blocks for the past three or four seasons now, and I always get the garlic blocks. The garlic salt alone is not meant to completely control flies. It's more meant to be used as part of a fly control system. This year, I am very excited to put these salt blocks out though, because we have done something a little bit different. This past summer, I took some pasture and hay samples and sent them off to a lab so that they could see what kind of quality feed I've got here. They sent that data to Redmond where they could then take that information and make me a custom tailored salt block to my environment. And this is not a special favor that they did just for me. They'll do this for anyone. I think the only stipulation is that if they're gonna mix you up a custom salt block, they want you to buy at least a pallet of it. Now, I think a lot of people could probably do fine on one of their standard salt blocks, but when we ran my feed samples, what we found is that I am extremely deficient in copper. Memory serves me right, the normal Redmond salt blocks have about 300 parts per million of copper that's naturally occurring in that salt. We have upped the copper in the Farmer Tyler Ranch mix to 2,000 parts per million. And I should also note that we're not just, you know, throwing random numbers at the wall here. Carson, who figured out this mix for me, is very knowledgeable when it comes to these sorts of things. And he's got a program and runs the numbers to figure out exactly how much copper my cattle need to be supplemented to them to make up for the deficiencies in my pasture and hay. I know this part of California is also deficient in selenium and that's not just confined to me right here. It's pretty much the whole North state. So we've got selenium in this block as well. 
Some level of mineral deficiency is to be expected. I mean, wherever you are, really. But I was surprised that I was that deficient in copper. If you guys remember several years ago, I had a necropsy performed on a cow that had died on the place and they had said then that she was low on copper and selenium. So I kind of knew that I had these issues going on, but I didn't know how bad the issues were until I ran the feed samples and actually had some hard numbers to look at. I presume that we have been deficient in these things for many years, so I'm very curious to see what sort of improvements or changes we can notice in the cattle once they get going on these blocks. If you're interested in getting some custom salt blocks made, I'll leave some contact info for Carson in the description below. He's the guy that you'll go to that can get you set up and dialed in with whatever you need. These guys are all out of salt. Well, it never fails. Whenever you put a new salt block in there, they go for it. And I remember the first time I put a garlic salt block in there. And the, if, if you've never handled the garlic block before, they, they have a pretty powerful odor. And the first time that pallet showed up, and I mean, you can smell it when it comes off the truck. And I thought, there's no way those cows are gonna start licking on that, that they're not gonna like the way that smells. But boy, was I in for a surprise. And these cattle kind of show you how it goes. They, they jump right in. Well, the cows are salted, sun's starting to get low. There's a couple more things I need to do back at the house. So let's head up there. You gonna sit underneath Callie? I've already gathered eggs once today, but this, this will be the last time that I do it today. The reason I do it several times like that is because we were having some egg eaters. There's several different ways you can deal with that. The way that I've been trying to do that seems to have been working is just to gather eggs as frequently as possible. So whoever is pecking at the eggs doesn't ever find a bunch of them. And hopefully that's just a habit that sort of goes away. Also, since moving the chickens out onto this larger run here it doesn't seem to be as big of a problem either and i don't know if it's because they're finding whatever minerals they were possibly lacking or if they're just busy you know they could i guess peck eggs just because they're bored and now they've got a lot to do i've also noticed since moving them over here into this larger run that they do not eat nearly as much food as they were eating before She's broody, but she's missing one important part of the equation, eggs. A lot of people had a lot to say about this roost that I put up in the last video, and it's always surprising to me that th the things that get people's attention. Many of you said that I should not make this out of metal because it'll be too cold and the chicken's feet will freeze and this and that. And to, to be fair, that probably is true in a lot of parts of the country or the world. In the part of California that I live in, we don't see freezing temperatures maybe, but I don't know, a handful of days a year. And when it does happen, it's only for a couple of hours. To put it in perspective, I don't even bother wrapping riser pipes on faucets or things like that because it's just not an issue. So... I'm not worried about their feet freezing to this. It just simply doesn't get that cold here. But if you live somewhere where it does get cold, something to keep in mind. And I know the vast majority of you are trying to be helpful, but some of you were being a little snarky. There's today's egg haul. I think we ended up getting 16. One last thing I want to do to my rat trap set up here before I go in for the night. And that is I want to add some of these sunflower seeds to the live trap. I have heard on multiple occasions from multiple people that sunflower seeds are very effective at attracting rodents. So obviously these aren't going to be able to do anything to help the good nature traps, but I think these will be very good in the live trap.
And one more thing that I did want to mention about this. In the last video, if you guys saw that, I showed you where I caught on the trail cam a, well, the first video was a rat sticking his head up in the good nature trap. And then the next video was the good nature trap blinking, indicating that it had just gone off and that rat laying there motionless below it. So it's pretty easy to deduce what happened here. The confusing part is that in the next video that the trail camera got that I think, I'll have to go back and double check, but I think it was like an hour or two later and another rat walked by and set it off. The rat that had been caught in the trap was gone and there is no trail cam footage of how that happened, whether it like, got up and walked away, whether another rat drug it off. I know sometimes rats will eat each other. They're, they're just beautiful little creatures. So I don't know what happened. Any way that that rat could have gotten away from the trap, the trail camera should have got it and it didn't. So I don't know if it was just a misfire or you know the trail camera didn't go off or if maybe that rat just had like a spasm and kicked himself out of the camera view really quickly. I'm not sure what happened. Do you guys have any ideas? Have you ever had where a trail camera doesn't go off? It just seems like if it if the trail camera was not working properly that I wouldn't have so many other videos. It just so happened to not work on that one moment that I really did want to see what happened. I feel pretty confident that we got that rat though just because the way the trap was blinking and the rats laying there motionless I, I don't know, I'm at a loss, but there's still more here, obviously, because the trail camera's picking up more. So we'll uh, hope we have some good luck tonight. Well, I don't hear the hot wire popping anymore, so that's a good sign. But you see the way they've got this dirt pushed up and you can imagine if that was touching the wire, how it would pretty easily ground it out. You guys gotta make some room if you want me to get in there. Well, I think that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.